have sheep, and we have a lot of sheep. Sheep are important because that is one of the major symbols of the Bible. So it's very appropriate that we talk about sheep. Tonight we're going to be looking at a new series, if you want to call it that. Uh, so for some of you, you've probably heard some of this before. But you know what? The Word of God, it never, ever gets old. So uh, tonight there's a word, there's a title, a name that God has. We'll look at that in just a moment. But as we think about sheep, can anybody tell me who the very first shepherd in the Bible was? Anybody? Abigail. David. Huh? David. Close. Not quite, but very close. You're, I mean, you're like right in that ballpark. Very good. But the first shepherd ever in Scripture. Anybody? Yes. Well, very close, very good. That's that's not a that's not a wrong answer, but uh, very close. But the very first, any one more, the very first shepherd ever in the Bible. Can anybody tell me? Abel. Very good, very good. Abel, very first shepherd, um, and and he offered the best of his flock to God, and God accepted that offering, he accepted that sacrifice, and, and blessed Abel for that. Um, Abel, if you're wondering, is the son of Adam and Eve. And all of the patriarchs, that word patriarch is a big word. It just means the, the founding fathers of the Hebrew nation. Uh, the patriarchs are very simple to remember. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. There are some others if you go into all 12 uh, of the sons of Jacob. Um, yeah, that's right. You go all 12 sons of Jacob. They too are patriarchs. You know, Judah, Reuben, uh, Dan, Issachar, Naphtali, on down the line. But um, for our purposes, Joseph will do nicely. Um, David, as I think Abigail said and one of, uh, one of the others said, is probably the most famous, the absolute most famous of the shepherds. Uh, David was a, he started out as a shepherd when he was a teenager, not much uh, older than y'all are tonight. And he later became a soldier, and eventually he became, well, before he was a soldier, and while he was a shepherd, he's also a songwriter. He was, he was very, uh, there's a word that we look, uh, use, it's called eclectic. Not electric, that's uh, like an electric guitar in a shred, that's not what I'm suggesting. But rather very, all that would be interesting to see him shred a guitar. Uh, but with that said, he's very eclectic. He was well-rounded, did a lot of things, and did a lot of things well. He was a songwriter, a shepherd, a soldier, and later he became a king. And he is also uh, the ancestor, humanly speaking, of the Messiah, Jesus. Absolute uh, most famous shepherd ever. Sheep are very important. That was how a lot of the people made their livelihoods. And you started young. Uh, we have some ch uh, young children here uh, tonight. And they would be trained when, when they were little uh, to start uh, herding the sheep and, and uh, shepherding the sheep. Because the more sheep and the more goats and eventually the more uh, oxen and camels and such that you had, you could be considered quite wealthy. Uh, and it's also important to rem rem remember that the sheep, they don't do well just by themselves. If you see the image behind me on the sides, they have a shepherd. A shepherd, in this case, is a very modern shepherd. He has his shepherd staff. Uh, probably, although you can't see it, somewhere in there he would most likely have a dog. Uh, because sheep on, them, on their own, uh, they're not always very smart. And they can be contrary animals. Uh, first of all, uh, while they may look cute and cuddly, they smell the high heaven. Okay? Um, and you can imagine you coming in from the back 40 smelling like a sheep. And then they will bite you if you... Uh, uh, you know, mess with them. Sometimes they can bite. They're not always the most uh, uh, sweet, kind, and wonderful. A lot like we are sometimes. Sometimes we stink. Sometimes we bite. Sometimes we uh, we uh, don't always cooperate. And if they're left out uh, on their own, you know what? You know what those sheep become if they're left by themselves? Can anybody tell me? Huh? 
pray. I heard the word pray. That is actually the correct biblical answer. I was going to say a tasty snack. Anybody watch the Bugs Bunny uh, uh, cartoons on, 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 in the mornings uh, on the METV? And I love it when the coyote is trying to get the sheep. And, of course, uh, they always have a watchdog that prevents that from happening. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I grew up with those uh, cartoons when I was little. But, yeah, uh, they, they are a tasty snack for a predator or for a thief to come in and, and to steal. But when the shepherd is there, and especially when he is using the shepherd, uh, the dog, whatever dog he's using that's been trained to, to herd the animals, the sheep see uh, that dog as a predator. So their natural instinct, they get scared, and sometimes they huddle in groups. And so as the, as the shepherd commands that dog to get the sheep moving in the right direction, so he commands the sheep. Shepherding is the chief image of who God is and what God does for you and for me and for His people. You and I, tonight, young and old, makes no difference. We have a special shepherd that oversees our lives today. We're going to look, learn, or relearn, rather, a special name uh, for God. It's the name. Uh, in Hebrew, you would pronounce it Yahweh Rohi or Rohi. Um, I'm going to pronounce it in the English version, Jehovah Rohi or Jehovah Roha. I suspect uh, my seminary professors, if they're watching, are cringing at my mispronunciation, but that's okay. They're not here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That is in Psalm 23, 1, and we're going to come back to that verse in just a moment. And when it says, I shall not want, it's not like, man, I don't want that. Get away from me. No, that is not what we're talking about. Uh, it means I will not lack. Uh, I will not go without. Then another passage of Scripture is we think about uh, God as our, our, our shepherd, as, as Christ as our shepherd. The Bible says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. John 10, verse 11, and verse 14. And then one of my favorite images from the book of the Revelation, Revelation chapter 17. For the Lamb in the center of the throne, and the Lamb is a reference to Jesus, by the way. For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Contextually, I believe that's talking about the 144,000, which uh, many Bible teachers say would be a group of men uh, from from the all 12 tribes of Israel who've gotten saved, who uh, evangelized the world, and from that great, awesome, amazing revival will come just hundreds and hundreds and thousands of souls. Other would say that it represents the people of God. I will let you debate that for another time. But I do know this, that he is the shepherd of us all, whether it's the church of here and now, 2022, Chucky Baptist Church, or whether it's the church that is already in heaven, of those who have gone before us, or the church of the future, when that time of, of the uh, great tribulation, when the church has been taken up, and those who are, are left have some who will have an opportunity to hear uh, with understanding others, many will reject uh, the, the witness of, uh, of the gospel, even as they do now. And I promise you this, Jesus is Lord of them all. He is the good shepherd of them all. So the question that we ask tonight, what is a shepherd? I take you back to Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, first of all, David is taking a look. You know, David, who uh, is a shepherd and a psalm, a psalm, try it again, a psalm writer, uh, he's, he's, he's looking at God in a very personal and very practical way because David knows a thing or two about being a shepherd. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. That's, that's a personal relationship. He's not, saying that, he's not saying that God is a shepherd or he's like a shepherd, although that would still be accurate, but he's saying the Lord is my shepherd, a personal shepherd. In the language of the Old Testament, the word rohi or Rohi means to pasture, to graze, to tend. And the scholars would tell us that it means to tend the flock, just as we saw the earlier picture. But you have the man with his shepherd's staff with a crook in it. Um, you wonder why it has that little crook. Uh, some would say that, well, it's for helping get the sheep out if it gets stuck in the mud or, or gets stuck in, uh, in a ditch or something like that. Now, whether that's true or not, I will defer to those who know a little bit more about it than I do, but it certainly makes sense. It means to tend to flock. A shepherd 
is an individual entrusted with the welfare of the flock of sheep. Men and women both. They were women who were, pro who were well, they were women prophets too, but uh, that's another sermon. Uh, but with that said, there were women who were shepherds as well. Uh, certainly, obviously, the wife of Moses, she, uh, her job was as a shepherd uh, when uh, Moses met her as he had come up out of Egypt uh, the first time when he was still about 40 years of age. So men and women could be shepherds. And then it's a person uh, that is, um, he's one who, or she, is one who is a feeder, that is, he feeds the flock, is a protector, a ruler, that doesn't mean something you measure by, although unless you're uh, following the word of God and, and you measure by that, I suppose will be an application, but uh, not a measure, uh, a ruler that you would use in your backpack, but rather a ruler in terms of having authority. It's the one who the Lord raises up to care for the total well-being of the people of God. In that capacity, then, yeah, uh, as a pastor, because that's where the word pastor comes from, is the, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament word uh, for, um, for, for um, shepherd. It's the word uh, for name. And with that said, as in that regard, I am a shepherd, or rather an under-shepherd. I, uh, I am entrusted by the Lord and, and by the, 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 this church body to, to care for the, the total well-being. I pray for y'all, prayer walk, and pray for y'all today. You, uh, young adults, senior adults, regular age adults, if I let children, if I left anybody out, it's not intentional. Uh, you know, that is, that is part of the job, to feed the Word of God. And yet, uh, we are reminded that it's not... Our well-being doesn't necessarily depend on who is or is not the pastor. It depends on Almighty God. The Bible reminds us in Genesis 49, 24. It says, Yet he steadied his bow, and his strong arms were tempered by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, and the name of the shepherd, the rock of Israel. So Israel looked to Almighty God. Now, Israel had leaders, Joshua, Moses, and other, David, uh, who uh, would be uh, a pastor-type figure, a shepherd figure, but they looked to Almighty God. They looked to Jehovah Rohi, or Rohi, as the shepherd. So let's, let's put a bow on this. Let's tie it, wrap it all together, put a bow on it. He said, that's great. You can give us hopefully a little snapshot of what that word means in the Old Testament as we think about what is a shepherd tonight. How does that affect me at Chunky Baptist Church on August the 10th? Am I right? Okay. August the 10th, uh, 2022 at about 6 something in the evening. Well, I will tell you, I'll give you a few suggestions. Tonight, you have a shepherd or you can have a shepherd who knows you individually. See, a shepherd when he has a flock and he spends time with them, he knows them and has a name for them. Sometimes he might have a nickname based on some uh, characteristic. Maybe uh, a really woolly sheep he might call Fluffy, okay? Or one that's a very honorary uh, sheep that doesn't always listen and might try to bite. Uh, he might call that sheep Grumpy. In fact, I have been called Grumpy on more than one occasion by my family. Uh, I don't know where they get that from. Seriously, I know. Um, and then uh, you might have one that is just so oh, he smells to high heaven. It's just it's, it's just gross. You might call you might call that one stinky. I mean, you know, he might have a, a nickname. Well, the Lord knows you individually. He knows you by name. He knows you, and he knows everything about you. He knows the good. He knows the bad. He knows everything in between, and he calls to you, and you can, and ultimately you will respond. You call to him, and he can, and he does respond to you. And I promise you this, you're not like the sheep that's just thrown out in, on, on the hill, left to themselves. You are not cast out, and you're not on your own, and you are not helpless, you are not hopeless, and you are not defenseless. You have a shepherd. Your shepherd is mighty to save. Number two, tonight you have, or you can have, a shepherd who knows you intimately. Um, you know, having that, that bond with the sheep. Uh, the sh you know, you, what if you had a, a bunch of shepherds? You have a huge flock of sheep, and you're all sharing one big sheep pen. And how are you going to know who your sheep and, and Brother Steve, if he had sheep, how are you going to know whose is whose? Because the sheep knows their shepherd's voice. 
And they will respond to the master that uh, oversees them, but they're not going to respond. In other words, Brother Steve's sheep is not going to respond to me. And my sheep would not respond to Brother Toby uh, because that I would not be, they would not be uh, their overseers and whatnot. Well, the same for us. God, he knows you by name intimately, and he has a name for you. You say, well, what does God call me? He wants to call you his child. He wants to call you his son or daughter by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. He knows the smallest detail about you. There's a bond there, and that bond cannot and will not be broken if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. There's nothing you can do to ever take yourself out of the hand of God. He's got a grip of grace on you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tonight, if you do not know, if you do not know God, if you do not know Christ as your personal shepherd, you can. Call on Him by faith tonight. Respond to His calling of your name tonight. I'm not going to try to do the call thing. Uh, I think that's actually for pigs. I, I've heard that done. But you get the idea. When, when somebody calls your name, when I was walking uh, in a Walmart one time in North Mississippi. Ain't nobody in North Mississippi knows who I am. And I heard somebody from down, uh, down one of the aisles, Hey, Brother Charles, or hey, Charles, uh, Charles Moore. That got my attention. I responded to my name. God calls you by name tonight. As we stand and sing our hymn of invitation, if, if the Lord is calling your name to trust Him for the very first time, come on down. Let's nail it down together, and we will. you can have that uh, sense of you do have a personal shepherd. It may be some other decision that the Lord has you to make public. Then you respond to your shepherd tonight. And that's not just for the young. It's for everybody. And if you don't have a church home, I promise you, let Chunky Baptist Church be uh, that church home. Uh, we, will, we will love you and we will receive you with open arms. As we stand and sing our hymn of invitation, you come tonight.